same car, they go the same places. So there's a clever way of doing things. And then there's just a way of doing things. And when I end up doing it the fuck way, do you understand? So I won't put nothing on my face. If I do put something on my face, it, it won't be to hide my face. It'll to be to give me the chance to get up close to them. A pair of glasses and a fake moustache. Do you understand what I'm saying? So they won't recognise me in the instant. I'm not saying I'm going about to do anything. I'm not saying I'm about to do anything. I'm just saying there's certain ways of doing things if you've got to do them. And last year, the year before, the amount of strength and energy that I used to prevent myself from going off me from Barney and just causing fucking chaos. Fucking massive, mate. Massive. But there is times, mate. There's moments in the last few months where I've been sat there just like... <sighs> and to be honest with these people, I'll be, I'm always honest with this. I don't know why I can't hold it back. I'll just tell you how it is. If I would have had access, <whistles> if I would have had access to what I needed to go and do what I wanted to do, and don't think I'll be getting life to off people. You must have heard me tracks from the get go. You know, I've shouted that thing by police. I won't say the word, but you know, when you're on the ceiling or you attack your wrists. That word, by police. So basically, it's going all out and it's not going to jail and it's not being arrested. If the filth turn up, they've got to put you in the floor. Do you understand what I'm saying? Buddha, Buddha, boom, Buddha, boom, Buddha, boom, 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 boom. But as always, I encourage you not to even participate in that life because you won't have to deal with the sh on a personal level I've got to deal with. The drug dealers and gangsters and all these crime families from your city. F them. It's all about yourself. But you know what I think to myself through all that struggle? Choose a life, not a knife, Darren. That's all to think about, mate. Choose a life, not a knife, Darren, lad. Don't go everything up. And it's never been about the money. I haven't sat there thinking about, oh, I need to go and do this because I've got no money. It's never been about the money. I can, I've been poor since a child. Living in poor conditions doesn't really impact upon me. Do you understand? So it's never, I've never really contemplated returning to violence. It's not returning to that material lifestyle. That's never been a problem with me. It's always been returning to violence. That's the sticking thing with me. Hard, mate. It's hard sometimes, honest to God. But right through my life, I've never... Directly, and when I say directly, when I, what I mean is indirectly, I've harmed innocent members of the public indirectly in the sense that the violence that was committed sent vibrations of fear to the general public and it harmed them that way, not physically. Do you understand? Right through my criminal career, if you like, I did not once harm an innocent member of the public. Not once. They were always criminal fraternities. Always. And I know it doesn't make a difference, but in my little sick mind it does. In my little sick mind it does. Do you understand what I'm saying? Everyone that got a hiding off me 
was a drug dealer or a scumbag doing things for drug dealers. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Every one of them. Every door that was gone through, every leg, every hip that was snapped, every jaw that was broke, all of it, they were all criminals to do with drug dealing. So it is what it is, people. You know, some of us have got morals. You know what it was? This is how it was. I could give Luke Whelan a double break, his hip, his knee, his ankle, his shin, and then the next day, cross an old woman over the road with a handbag and a shopping. Boss. You just saying a beating. What do you mean a beating, lad? Look. These kids that try and give you a hide in these days, there's seven or eight of them. They're punching fat of each other before they're even getting near you. You don't do no damage if there's eight of you jumping on one person. It nothing happens. Just get up and brush it off. I've had it. But you know when two or three heavy handers give you a hide and it's full for you. Because they get the shots on target. When there's eight of them all going chaotic, haven't got a clue what they're doing. They're hitting each other instead of hitting you. So, I'd rather run into a crowd of eight than a crowd of two or three. A group of eight than a group of two or three. Yes, JFK skulls. And I'm not ta I'm not chatting. I'm not I'm not I'm not bigging myself up neither. You need that's the first thing you need to understand. I'm just speaking about how I felt in the past and the situations I've been in. I had a boss hiding and I don't even know who give me the hiding and I still don't know to the day. A boss hiding, no, and I mean from naughty hiding. Anyway, I'll tell you about it, eh? Nice one, JFK. So I didn't really used to go out, no nightclub and all that. But I went through this little phase where I was buying shirts, kecks, Prada trainees. I weren't wearing shoes like everyone else because you just slip and slide when it goes off. So with them Prada shoes, you'd have like a nice sole on the bottom which could, you know, keep you agile. Keep your agility there. So anyway, I didn't really drink on this particular night. I must have been spiked or something, because I'm just blotto. Don't know what's happening. So anyway, I come out of a club called The Buzz. And when I come out of that club, I'm arguing with the doorman. I'm by myself. Don't know how I've ended up by myself, but I'm by myself. And I'm arguing with the doorman on this Buzz club. And there's like six of them, all juice heads. You know what the old doorman were like, don't you? And I'm arguing with them, I have a little scrap with them, and my shirt's ripped down here, and my pants are ripped by the fly. That's all I can remember, having a scuffle with them, and then I walk along, and on the corner, there's a lad and two birds, and the lad shouts me, yes, Darren. And I go over, and my chest is hanging out, my boxies are out, and I'm, t I'm chatting the two birds up, thinking I'm them bollocks pissed. Then the next minute, they're just there, hey, Darren, turn round, woof, on the floor, and I'm danced on. I'm just danced on. I don't even wake up till I'm in a taxi. A taxi driver's got me, put me in the taxi and asked me, and he must have known me. He's just took me directly to my Mars. The feedback I got, no one would tell me who it was, but I believe it was a fella called Paul Noonan and another fella called Divine. These were kids from Kensington. So I believe it was that Paul Noonan and, and this Divine and someone else that's just bounced all over me. And the people that was telling me, saying, lad, you were fighting with them till the death. So I weren't just knocked out and that was it, they danced on me. I was back up and having a go with them. 
and just got them destroyed off them. Woke up in my ma's spare room, because that's where I got dropped off of my ma's. I had my own gaff, but I got dropped off of my ma's, and I was full of bruises from head to toe. All my legs were swelled, all my ribs were shattered. I had like three ribs broke or something. <laughs> no jaw was broke though. My face was bruised up, all my arms, no way they just danced on me. And back in that day, they were all taking steroids, so it weren't just three grocks, it was three steroid abusing horrible rats just bounced on me. But I couldn't prove it was them. I just couldn't prove it was them. No one would say, definitely them lads. They'd just say, oh, I think it was him. I th I've heard it was him. I've heard it was them. So, it took me about a week to recover. It took me about a week or two to recover, mate. It was. The ribs were the longest. You know, the pain on your ribs. Any little move. Ah. Mm, not going to the hospital. Because back in the day, you didn't go to the hospital for your injuries. I've been stabbed twice. I've been captured a few times, been really hurt. And you don't go to the hospital. And the reason you don't go to the hospital, because the minute there's medical records, they can just press charges. They don't need you to say anything. As soon as they've got medical records of a serious assault, they can go on them. So they can go with themselves and do it. So you didn't really go to hospital when you were when you got injured. So there was no medical records of it. Do you understand what I mean? I was twenty two then, mate. Twenty two, twenty one, twenty two. Might have even be younger, 20. But you know what? I shouldn't have went out. I just shouldn't have went out. It's the bottom line. I weren't a drinker back then, so when I had a drink, I was just... As I said before, I'm sure I got spiked. And I don't even know why I went back to that club after the bad memories we had from there. Used to be with, we had a boss little kid, had this kid round his feet. Well, I had him round me quite a lot, and so did all the lads off Scotty. 